today. How chibi is your robo? I bet it's a lot. This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Shrek Point. Get out of our swamp. Good. With Shrek 5 announced, that'll keep us relevant a little longer. What? You weren't doing a Shrek bit, were you? No, I want these monsters out of our swamp. Hey fam, remember Chibi Robo? That GameCube game about the tiny robot that cleans up the world's ugliest house while having psychedelic adventures? Here, have another one. Meet Korobo, a new game currently being kickstarted by Tiny Wonder Studio that, for all intents and purposes, looks to be a spiritual sequel to the original Chibi Robo. The dev team consists of former Skip Limited staff like Kenichi Nishi, the co-director of the original Chibi Robo game, uh, Hiroshi Moriyama, the other co-director of Chibi Robo, Keita Eito, co-director of Chibi Robo Ziplash, Hirofumi Taniguchi, the composer for Chibi Robo, and Hikarin, a character designer on Chibi Robo. So you know that Korobo is going to do the Chibi Robo formula upright. Which is why it was very surprising to hear that Tiny Wonder Studio does not want people to, quote, approach this as a new Chibi Robo game, adding, quote, actually, this is its own very different sort of game. Fine. I guess I will now approach Korobo as uh, as an erotic detective visual novel about anthro raccoons. Why not? I rarely approach most games as their intended genre. To me, Metroid is more of a rhythm dating life sim where after 36 hours of game time, I get to kiss my heavily mutated Chozo wife. And Super Mario 3D World is turning out to be a survival horror game where I lose 15 lives and my goddamn mind trying to find the second green star on Switchboard Falls. I get that Tiny Wonder probably wants people to temper their expectations, since Ziplash was a huge departure from the formula of tiny robot that cleans your house and fixes your family. But have some faith, guys! People miss Chibi Robo, and I know they can't wait to watch your hard-boiled raccoons fuck! Possibly bolstered by the pomp, circumstance, and preposterous trophy system of the Esports World Cup that we reported on previously, the International Olympic Committee has voted for and announced the creation of the Olympic Esports Games. We don't know how often it will take place, but presumably more than once per Olympiad. And we don't know what games will be contested or anything about their trophy system. The press release spends most of its word count talking about how cool it is now in Saudi Arabia. Since, yes, this is also part of Vision 2030. And indeed, the IOC has partnered with the Saudi Arabia Olympic Committee to organize the esports games for 12 years. Does that mean Saudi Arabia will be hosting the games for 12 years? No idea, but they're hosting the first one in 2025. What games will Espathletes be playing? We don't know that either, but if the IOC's test run Olympic Esports Week is anything to go by, it's going to be weird. See, while various governing bodies control regulations and competitions of traditional Olympic sports, nobody owns football or the 100-meter sprint. So perhaps the Olympics the organization that promotes friendly competition and accessibility to sport, shouldn't be fronting an event where every discipline is owned by a different corporation, each motivated to maintain their platform of competition only so far as it provides growth to its shareholders. But that's just our opinion. No, the IOC is much more concerned about violence, which is why Esports Week had games like Gran Turismo and Just Dance and other games selected by international sports federations. For example, the World Archery Fed suggested Tic Tac Bow, a far cry from Counter-Strike and League of Legends. While the IOC said they will be working with these same Federation partners first, we don't know for sure what the actual games will look like, if they will follow course. We, again, know basically nothing about the Olympic esports games, except that the IOC said, quote, in order to address the specific nature of the Olympic esports games, the IOC will also take a different approach with regard to the financing and organization of these games. So 
I don't know, look forward to official sponsor of the Olympic Games, G Fuel, I guess. Bethesda Game Studios and Blizzard Entertainment both recently announced new employee unions. Both unions are wall-to-wall, -wall, meaning they include artists, designers, programmers, engineers, and producers. The 241 staff at Bethesda and the 500 at Blizzard, who have opted to join the Communication Workers of America, got their thanks to parent corporation Microsoft's labor neutrality agreement. The CWA set up tents on Blizzard's campus, and employees were allowed to discuss unions right out in the open. This is a markedly different experience for workers seeking to unionize than we've seen at Amazon or Starbucks. But why is Microsoft so cool and collected about unions? Well, it's kind of in the fine print of their acquisition of Activision Blizzard King. The deal was completed on October 13th, but approval is still pending from the United States Federal Trade Commission. The FTC is the last of several countries' official antitrust bodies to approve the deal, with the UK's Competition and Markets Authority signing off earlier this year. Microsoft is in the position of needing to continue day-to-day -day operations while under close scrutiny from a government organization. This is a little bit like a first date for Microsoft, only instead of trying to casually sneak an arm over the shoulder of the FTC at the movies to grab some boob, Microsoft needs to pull out some chairs and hold some doors while under the influence of being a very successful for-profit company beholden only to its shareholders. You know, they need to act like less of a tech bro and more of a tech boyfriend. Blarf. Uh, more on that in a minute. For now, let's celebrate this W. Sure, politics may have been involved in how relatively smoothly these unions were set up, but hey, this is still over 700 more people working in games with better benefits and job security than we had last month. The next time you pick up a quest in WoW or board a new ship in Starfield, there's a much better chance the workers responsible for the games you play during your downtime might themselves also finally get to experience Whatever the hell downtime is, what a concept. Congratulations to the new union members of Microsoft-owned companies. Indeed, the FTC is still desperately trying to keep Microsoft honest after the massive Activision Blizzard acquisition merger, or as it's known now, the acquisition blizzarder. Even after the FTC's injunction to pause the merger was struck down and Microsoft moved ahead anyway, the FTC has been appealing that pause and keeping tabs on things, and wouldn't you know it, that Game Pass price increase we reported last week might not be to consumer benefit. In a letter of complaint to further bolster their appeal, the FTC factually states, quote, Microsoft is raising the price for its Game Pass Ultimate product from $16.99 to $19.99 a month, a 17% year-over-year increase. Additionally, Microsoft is discontinuing... It's $10.99 a month console Game Pass product. Users of that product must pay 81% more to switch to Game Pass Ultimate. For consumers unwilling to pay 81% more, Microsoft is introducing a degraded product, Game Pass Standard, at $14.99 a month. This product costs 36% more than console Game Pass and withholds day one releases. Product degradation, removing the most valuable games from Microsoft's new service, combined with price increases for existing users, is exactly the sort of consumer harm from the merger the FTC has alleged. Recall that, as part of regulatory appeasement, Microsoft publicly promised that Call of Duty would be available on Game Pass without additional price increases, quote, based on the merger. So maybe they could argue this price increase was purely inflation, nothing to do with the merger, but they already increased it last year for that reason, and now only the top tier Game Pass will get to play Call of Duty on day one. So it sounds like the FTC has some grounds here. They even referenced a previous letter they sent calling out this and the 2,000 person layoffs as the hallmarks of a firm exercising market power post-merger. And the FTC has been able to reverse mergers before, even after they've technically happened. So who knows what could happen here? Actually, is there a Microsoft merger fandom wiki? They seem to know everything. I, don't, I never know what I'm going to find when I consult a wiki. No, no kidding. I can definitely put my trust in sites like Wikipedia, though. Yeah. 
And wiki feet. Stop talking. Come on. How am I supposed to know what shoes I wore on the last episode of Checkpoint? I don't know. Maybe check the Loading Ready Run wiki. Oh, gross. Why would they have pictures of my feet up there? Coming up. The leaks were true. The Cybertruck has arrived in Fortnite with a trailer showing it doing three things real Cybertrucks can't actually do. Drive off road, tow massive weights, and be unequivocally enjoyed by its driver. Oh, okay. that's Paul. I'm recording. <laughs> okay. I thought something was going on in your digestion. <laughs> Two things can be true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apparently in Fortnite, people are just destroying the Cybertruck on site. Yeah, good. Even though there's no reason to go out of your way to destroy a vehicle that's not actively in use, but people are just... <laughs> they see it, they're like, oh, wait, I might lose, but this will be fun. Yeah. I don't get to do this in real life. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> it's very clear, especially from that trailer, that it's like, this is something Tesla must have paid for. Like, there's no way that... I don't think there was a clamor, no. There's no way that Epic would go out of their way to make such a wanky trailer of, like, showing the Cybertruck towing. It's like a person and then a vehicle and then a tank and then yeah. a different other vehicle all being out towed by the Cybertruck. And it's like, no, that's not... I don't know what kind of favors you think you're asking for, whose knob you're polishing, but... Well, I can I think of see, one I, person. Yeah, but it's like, I don't see what the point is for Epic to do that, but wh yeah. whatever... But, but don't put my feet on the lure wiki unless they're already there then leave them there i guess don't let's not as someone who has a youtube comment account dedicated to his feet it's okay oh, okay yeah. the deal was completed on october the 13th but approved, i want to do that again nobody says october the 13th they just say october the 13th don't they <laughs> you just said the same thing twice yeah I did, didn't I? It came yeah. out of my mouth that way. Yeah. Cool. Let's try again. How did that happen? I, I've been swapping words around for like the, since I woke up this morning, I'm going to just say at four o'clock, hmm. you know, at a normal hour when people wake up. I'm mal to love a propisms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me find you very quickly. The, um, the, <laughs> the Olympic esports. Oh, good. Meet. I didn't know if we were going to do a game pass one or not, but yeah, this is, this is good. So, yeah, because I was starting to write this story and Paul pointed out the the eSports week, just that it was such an odd selection of games because what they did was they went to the various sort of sporting authorities for different sports and were like, how can we represent your sport in eSports? And they're like, oh, uh, just dance for us, I guess. Yeah. So it's not it's not like they went to be like, what do people normally play and watch as esports, right? It was, you know, what are some so okay, virtual regatta for actual regatta for sailing? Thank Christ, because if I got that wrong, virtual taekwondo, okay, yeah. a mobile game called Tennis Clash, uh, Konami's WBSC e baseball colon power pros, what tic tac bow which we talked about which is also a mobile game that was the that was you pointed that one out there. yeah that was the actual like the world archery federation was like oh yeah that one yeah that's the game that we want to use for everyone to understand how seriously they should take our sport of shooting arrows at targets yeah mm -hmm. and so so the the now this now what's interesting was that the federation internationale de, Autom de l'automobile yeah so like the international car it's sports the, we would neck that to the fia i think yeah you know they were like hey what what should we play what should we do for like a car thing at esports week should we do you know i racing like everyone's doing yeah. and they were like no no that's that involves too much setup that's not accessible enough so mm. it, we should be doing gran turismo i see and i'm like okay that's cool but still gran turismo is just owned by a company yeah right it's just it, this feels like a thing the Olympics shouldn't be doing, no. right? Like it, 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 as I said in the story, like obviously, for example, FIFA is among the global organizations that sort of control football at a professional level, but they don't own football. Yeah. Like Anyone can, can play it. Exactly. Right? They don't own the IP of football. Yeah. Whereas... All the esports, like even if they did do ones that had violence, which is the main reason that they don't want to do like Counter Strike or whatever. Yeah, you know, it's like 
what if Valve is like, uh, we did we released a bad patch and now Counter Strike is ruined or what or like what yeah. if what if like they pick a game and some companies like we've decided not to support the servers anymore. Then it's like, oh, that Olympic sport has stopped because some company has decided not to keep paying for their online servers. I am just—it's so weird. I'm just—I'm frankly surprised that a lot of like what my expectation to hear was just a bunch of very out of touch uh, old people being like, "Well, I think I played bowling one time on my Wii. So how much, you know?" And the, then the shovelware people come out of the—it's like there's. You know, if you want to talk about like barriers to entry, hmm. there's hundreds of thousands of discs of, of old Wii Shovel World just moldering in, in oh, bins yeah. and places, I'm sure, that they could be like, well, we could just pick all that shit up and then we definitely anybody can afford to be a part of the Olympic Esports Week. Uh, uh, still, I can't get past Just Dance. I'm very sorry. Oh, and chess.com. Okay. I mean, that's just chess. So that's I guess just that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. No one uh, owns chess, but I do like chess.com was one of the, you know, Olympic Esports official... I mean, chess.com. I would have really liked it if it was like like the pentathlon. They go to like a to like a track and field entity or whatever. I mean, like, mm-hmm. what do you think represents your thing? And like, this is so fucking stupid. Uh, chess.com. That's what represents the modern pentathlon. Just you just pick chess.com and stop talking to us, you you morons. I just think the Olympics the Olympics can just be their own thing, mm-hmm. right? Like you've got like they're they're adding break dancing this year. Great, which we've recently learned is going to be like improv freestyle like they're not gonna know the music before they begin the competition okay. they're gonna be like play go and mm-hmm. they have to they have to improvise dance routines that's cool another sport that's brand new for the for the summer games starting at the end of this week in gay petty yeah yeah, yeah. kayak cross what is... yeah so it's four kayakers uh-huh. at the same time they get dumped in from like a big slide oh cool it's like the normal you might have seen the kayak slalom before it's like one person they're in a kayak they at some point have to do like the loop where you go all the way underwater and they have to make it past the slalom gates right great all of that is still true you have to do the loop you have to make it past the slalom gates except it's four people at a time and it's full contact oh so it's like three other people on the controllers this is great yeah i love this it's full contact mario kayak kayak, where you're Mm -hmm. like you're like hitting the other people with your paddles and stuff that's that i cannot wait to watch yeah kayak i like good danger yeah Yeah. absolutely that sounds good so like you know the olympics have plenty of stuff going for it i don't you just let let esports could just be its own thing yeah let the world esports cup crush their trophy medallions or whatever the hell when you showed the thing about the about saudi arabia like the whole like uh, the picture that went up over your shoulder and it said 142 and I was like because you're like how cool Saudi Arabia is and the thing goes up and says 142 session and I'm kind of like it's 142 degrees <laughs> in Saudi Arabia because I didn't see it's an E not a not yeah a I should like this is this is relevant but this is from from the official press release on the IOC website um because again, they they they're just like this is a thing that we're doing in association with uh with South Korea. Um, IOC member, Her Royal Highness Princess Rima Bandar Al Saud, who is a member of the board of directors of the Saudi the Saudi Arabian Olympic and Paralympic Committee, All right. and president of the Olympic Women's Committee, mm. was one of the people pushing for this. And it's like, it just it's like you're in the royal family of saudi arabia they don't give a crap about conflict of interest like the ioc just wants money yeah so absolutely but it's like huh and there is that there is that over there's an overhanging arch of uh, my my dude if you play counter-strike how would you like to win an olympic gold medal for once in your life Mm -hmm. there that sense of but they won't be doing those games we assume right but it but there is that sense of but it would be nice if i like i've won all these other awards i've won these prizes i have these great big trophies that have my opponent's hands that have been ground up into batter and been dipped in like in like salt and then put inside the trophy for me or fucking whatever and it's like but i could have a gold medal that i could bite on a podium and it's like that there's that that um there's something about that image that i think kind of gets pumped into people when they're small mm-hmm. and, and then they work very hard at doing a thing it's like if i could win a gold medal for like excel spreadsheets then i guess you know that would be exciting too right the olympic games the actual olympic games the modern olympiad used to have uh poetry as a sport mm-hmm. as as an event you can win a gold medal in it used to have architecture i don't know how this was 
competed or judged. I don't know how. They I've build never, like spaghetti bridges. I've never looked into it, but I would love to know how you win a gold medal in architecture. Yeah. I'd like oh. to see rhythm gaming make it into the esports week. Actually, I think that would oh, be very interesting. Man, like actual rhythm gaming. I want to see DDR. Yeah, yeah, that'd yeah, be yeah. good TV. Yeah, I think that like I like the stuff that goes on in Evo yeah. should make it in. Yeah, absolutely, because it's you're playing an incredibly high, like frame perfect level for a lot of that stuff. And like fighting games, most of them, mm -hmm. those are not any more violent than the Olympics, which has boxing. And taekwondo, taekwondo and judo, right? Like, sling, yeah. you know, that th th they're not using guns yeah. generally. I think the Joker's in a Mortal Kombat game. Mortal Kombat probably wouldn't. There's fencing. People fight with weapons yeah. all yeah. the time, right? So. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of guys have guns. Mortal, Mortal Kombat probably would be out. You that ever seen be. Olympic, like Olympic uh, clay shooting? I haven't, no. It's astonishing. It's because you can on in Canada, CBC gets the thing. And so if you go onto the CBC gym thing, you can watch just any Olympic feed because yeah, they, they cover them all. They broadcast every sport. Yeah. Right. So you can just, and I was like, oh, skeet shooting. Hell yeah. Let's watch that. It's, it's so impressive. It's amazing. Also, it's funny because, you know, you, you picture an Olympian in your head. None of these people look like no, that. No, not at all. Absolutely. <laughs> Much bigger mustaches on the people doing skeet and I, shooting. And I used to play the skeet shooting thing in uh, Duck Hunt like yeah. years ago, right? Oh, yeah. like, so not in, like last week, but like years ago, I used to do that. So I'm like, and that was really fun. I love doing that. So I can totally see how that is a test of skill and, and sport. And yeah. All right, Heather, chop it up. Patreon.com slash Loading Ready Run. Become a member on this channel. See your name soon. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Shout out, by the way, to Nelson for writing that story about unions. Yeah. I added the thing about boobs, though. Don't blame him for that. Of course, of course, BJ. I, that just goes without saying. Yeah. I had no part in it.